Pressing on. Paul said, I press toward the mark. And we'll read about it in a second. But I thought about that uh, TV series, Survivor. Have you ever seen Survivor? Where they put uh, a group of like 16 people in a very difficult situation. Several years ago, they put them in the outback of Australia. And they have to work together as a team. And at the same time, eliminate fellow team members. They had to work together to survive. And I, I see that as a picture of the church. We are in an increasingly hostile world. and We have to work together to, to survive and to glorify Jesus Christ. Today, as we get here, I realize that, that, that in Survivor TV show, the one that perseveres is the one that wins the prize. Listen to what Paul said about this in Philippians. He said, not that I've already attained or am already perfect, but I press on, I press on, some of you need to press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. He is telling us that our mindset as a Christian is that we've got to keep pressing. I thought about how World War II was won. In the darkest days of World War II, when England's back was to the wall, Winston Churchill got on the radio and he said, we will fight them on the beaches. We will fight them on the landing grounds. We will fight them in the streets and in the hills. We will never surrender. And I thought, what, a, what an attitude for us. We've got to keep pressing. We cannot surrender to the enemy. When he went to his uh, alma mater, Harrow School, to speak, he stood up and just his speech was very short. He looked at all the students and said, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. That was the motto theme of his life. That was the theme of Paul's life. He didn't give up. Have you ever noticed how Jesus pushed people? He pushed people. Rich young ruler, sell all and come and uh, follow me. Look at the, the man by the pool. Do you want to get well? Take up your mat and walk. And he did. He admired the Canaanite woman because she kept pushing him to heal her daughter. He admired the woman who got on her hands and knees and crawled through, the crowd, crawled through the crowd because of her perseverance. She pushed through every obstacle. What are the obstacles you need to push through this morning? Maybe it's doubt. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's a worry. Maybe it's a sin. I've learned this that people do not appreciate what they've not struggled for. When you struggle for something, you appreciate it, don't you? When you have to push to get it, you appreciate it when you have it. And I believe that Paul said, I pressed hard the mark of the high calling of God. There's several things he's saying there that I want to mention to you. And I want to point out five things to you. Please, if you're taking notes, please write these down. By the way, I wrote this down here. Think about these two thoughts. When you stop pressing, you start digressing. When I'm not pressing myself, I'm regressing. I'm backing up. And here's another thing. When you stop pushing yourself spiritually, you'll start getting pushed around spiritually by the enemy. Paul is telling us there in that scripture, that we're to continue to persevere. And some of you need to persevere in your marriages. You need to keep pushing your children. You've given up trying in a culture that's turning their heads. Some of you senior adults, you may have given up on life, you know, happiness and joy. Don't give up. Keep pushing. And look at what Paul said. How did Paul do it? How did he keep going when he was beaten and abused and rejected? Five things I want you to write down. Number one, write down Paul's aspiration. Paul's aspiration. What did he inspire to? He had here a clear objective and a clear goal for his life. He said, I am pressing toward the goal of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He had a goal for his life. Some of you Maybe you've retired and you don't have any goals for your life. Set a new goal for your life. His aspiration was to achieve something. We're living in a day when people have expectations. They don't have aspirations. They expect the government to take care of them. They don't aspire to learn, to grow, so they can take care of themselves. We as God's people have to have goals in our lives, to glorify God, to live for Jesus Christ. I, I saw a video last year 
about a man who weighed 540 pounds. And it showed this, showed him losing weight over a several year period. His fiance was taking pictures of him. He fell in love at 540 pounds. He was a, a lot to love. And uh, he wanted to lose that weight for his fiance. He lost 300 pounds. He had a big goal for his life. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. Set some goals. Not only did Paul have an aspiration, but number two, Paul had a fixation. A fixation. A concentration. He was single-minded. He said, one thing I do. One thing I do. I live to do one thing in my life. What's the one thing you live for? That was his fixation. One thing I do. We're about to see the Olympics on TV this week. And you're going to hear stories. And they'll do background stories on athletes. And you're going to see wonderful stories of sacrifice. Getting up at three in the morning to go swim and, and to train. The discipline of what they had to eat or not eat. And how they had to work and labor for one thing, for the prize. Now, we don't earn our salvation, but we, we labor to glorify the God of our salvation. We need to be fixed on doing one thing. We're living in a day when the world is telling our children, enjoy it all. Have all these experiences in life. The more you experience, the happier you'll be. No, no, there's only one thing that makes you happy. The one thing is pleasing Almighty God. And that was his fixation. Here's another thing, Paul's determination. Did you see his determination here? One thing I do, I do. Underline I do there. One thing I do, he said, I'm determined. Sometimes it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. And sometimes we have to do things by determination. Listen. Most people who succeed in life do so not because they're destined to succeed, but because they're determined to succeed. We're living in a day would say, oh, you, you have what you have because you were, you were given it. No, I was determined to get it. It's determination that we need in our churches today. I am determined to live for Jesus no matter what. Adam and Eve were not determined. And they sinned. But notice this. Notice what he said in determination. He said, forgetting what is behind. Now that kind of puzzled me. Because when he said, this is what I'm determined to do. I'm determined to put the past behind me and focus on the future. What if you got up in the morning and you were determined to forget your worries, your fears, and your failures. I'm just going to forget where I failed. I'm going to forget my fears. I'm going to forget my worries. I'm a, I'm a child of Almighty God by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I am determined to live today. I may have stumbled yesterday, but I'm going to live for him today. I want to tell you, the things that are behind you, are not as important as the thing God, things God has in front of you. So he was determined. I love what Billy Sunday said. You've heard this before. Billy Sunday said this. He said, I'm against sin. I'll kick it as long as I've got a foot. I'll fight it as long as I've got a fist. I'll butt it as long as I've got a head. I'll bite it as long as I've got a tooth. And when I'm old and uh, fistless and footless and toothless, I'll gum it till I go home to glory and it goes home to perdition. <laughs> Listen to this. Write this down. Here's your refrigerator quote. Uh, we don't have it to get to you today, but here's your refrigerator quote. Write it down. Put it on your refrigerator, please. The bigger the mess, the more I have to press. 
All said, I press toward the mark. When? When life's a mess. I have to press. That's a poem, isn't it? The bigger the mess, the more I have to press through it. Notice not only his determination, his fixation doing one thing, his aspiration for going for the prize, but look at Christ's expectation of him. He said, I pressed toward the mark for what? The upward call of God, upward call of Christ on my life. In other words, I do this because he expects it. God expects me to keep pushing. God expects me to keep trying. He, God expects me to keep going because his son picked up a cross one day and he took it to Calvary for you and for me. He pressed on with the cross and he calls us to take it as well. Now I wrote some things down. I want you just to listen to what I want to say now. It doesn't matter what you face today. You're to press on. It doesn't matter what happened to you yesterday. You have to press on. It doesn't matter what's coming tomorrow. You have to press on. You may not have support from family or loved ones, but you have to press on. You have, may have doubts, but you must press on. You might be terrified, paralyzed with fear, but you have to put another foot out there and press on. You might be hurt. You might be in pain and have pain going on. It might be extremely difficult what you're facing, but you have to press on. It might be costly, but you are expected to press on. You may stumble and fall, but you're expected to press on. That's Christ's expectation. But last of all, I want to say this. Look at Paul's heavenly motivation. I'm looking forward to the high upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul's eyes were on heaven. And when you've got a mess going on and you have to press through, keep your eyes turned upward. Look at him, not at your mess. As Stephen was being stoned, he looked up. And as we are going through trials, we need to look up. Several years ago, I had a friend who needed a heart. He, uh, some of you know him. And uh, could you imagine, you're not gonna make it unless they find a heart for you for a heart transplant. And can you imagine the anxiety Waiting, will one be provided? Will I die before it happens? That's got to be, that's got to work on your mind. One day I was looking at uh, his Facebook site and he posted Romans 12, 12. Looked it up and here's what Romans 12, 12 says. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. What a testimony. Years ago, Dan Bogus wrote a song, In the Name of Jesus, Press On. And in that song, he said, when the valley is deep, when the mountain is steep, when the body is weary, when we stumble and fall, when the choices are hard, we are battered and scarred. When we spend our resources, when we've given our all, in the name of Jesus, press on. In the name of Jesus, press on. Folks, it doesn't matter what's going to happen with COVID, we're pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Remember that song? Let's keep pressing. Let's keep pressing to glorify Jesus, to know him, and to make him known. May God bless you today. I'm so sorry we could not worship together. But we'll be together, Lord willing, real soon.
Till then, pray with me. Would you do that? Father in heaven, don't know where your people are today, somewhere at home, some may be uh, traveling, some may be away or even at the beach. But Father, wherever they are, make yourself alive and real to them. And I pray, Lord, that on, on this day when we could not meet together, but that I pray that your spirit would go out and continue to weld our hearts together. Bless Cedar Falls Baptist Church. I pray, Father, for, for your healing grace for our sick, for your saving grace for the lost in our community. And I pray for your ministering grace to our staff. And I pray, Father, that uh, you're going to bring us to, together again next week and that uh, we're going to enjoy sweet fellowship with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me say one more thing. Don't forget your offering. Uh, you can go online, and uh, you can give online. Please do that. Uh, we need it. We need to keep going. We're pressing on. Hope that you'll help us do that. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.